All right, hands out your pocket, please. Why? Hands out your pocket, Why? please. Y'all put us over. I gave you my registration, which has just been registered today. You have your rights. You are the second man. Turn it out for me. Four, come on. Hello guys, as a reminder, your activity is the best things for me. I'm grateful for every single like and comment. And of course, if you can do that, click the thanks button. Even one dollar is very important to me. Thank you, and let's get started. How are we doing? You go to school over here at FIU? No, what? You go to school here in FIU? No. All right, hands out your pocket, please. Why? Hands out your pocket, Why? please. Hands out. Shots fired, shots fired. I have a subject down right here on 107 Southwest 7. Throw that out. Throw Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. On your face, do it now. His arm. It's a 9 reference. One male been shot in the arm by the tourniquet. He also uh, used chemical spray on me. Uh, Stay still. Okay. Stay still. I got a rescue you coming. You I got a rescue coming great. to check you out. Ah. Dude, why did you spray me, man? Ah, you didn't have to shoot. Why are you spraying me? Did you double lock? Did you double lock? Uh, double lock. Yeah, in his pocket and take something and put it I saw it as I was pulling up. I was about to open the door. And I'm running up to him. I told yes. him not to go in his pocket and he immediately and I hurt the pocket. Uh, give me a, uh, give me a, uh, uh, give me a bike card. So, uh, what? Give me a, give me a ample bike card. This guy had never broken the law before his encounter with the cop. And he said he used pepper spray because he was scared. Is that a stupid thing to do? Yes. But do you think it was fair to get shot for doing it? Personally, I think it's a little excessive. And the cop, as usual, was acquitted and not charged. You've probably already seen our next video, but I'd like to discuss how the media is trying to whitewash the reputation of a cop who caused a man to lose his life. On August 10th, Homan called the Atlanta Police Department after getting into a minor traffic accident. According to preliminary statements from the GBI, Homan became non-compliant, and the responding officer Kieran Kimbrough eventually tased him following a physical struggle. But Holman's family said it was the officer, not Holman, who escalated the situation. Now we're asking for the officer to be jailed and prosecuted to the fullest extent, because what he did to our father was murder. Why, why do I feel like this, man? I'm old man, I'm old man. I'm not right away. An autopsy report lists the tasing, diabetes, and heart disease as factors contributing to a home and death. The officer was fired after this incident. The department says he failed to wait for a supervisor to arrive on scene before moving forward with a physical arrest, which violates procedure. Now, watching the body camera video gives us a first-hand look at what happened that night, but the media is interviewing experts who are trying to pass off what happened as an accident. I told you once, Lower your voice. My voice you're not, you're My not voice gonna scream at me. I'll try to show you as much as I am allowed by the moderators on YouTube, but you can Google it and see that this man did nothing wrong. He literally called the cops himself to get help. But meeting the cops uh, is always a lottery when the situation can end uh, tragically. When a police officer arrives on the scene of a car accident, I ain't doing nothing. tensions can rise. The officer and citizen interaction went to another level. And on that level, Holman lost his life. And here's an expert opinion you may have seen in the media. To me is very sad. Had this gentleman who's now deceased just signed the ticket, none of this would have happened. He believes citizens are responsible, just as the officers are, for de-escalation. Can someone explain to me how a person who is beaten and tasered can be held accountable? He overreacted. I don't personally see any criminal charges against him. At the very worst, I think we've got involuntary manslaughter. You know, friends, if this man was struck by an accidental unlucky blow and lost his life because of it, I wouldn't argue that it's manslaughter. But Holman said he couldn't breathe 15 times. And if the cop doesn't care at that point, is it an accident? And the next video is about how cops can even set up their own system of operation. And it wouldn't be a problem if it was just them. But because cops can't uh, just check a driver's registration, Lloyd Biden people have to suffer. Let's watch. Over here just got pulled over for no reason, said we didn't have no registration. I just got the car registered this morning. Just gave my paperwork, tell them to get off my... This stupid standing here looking goofy as fuck at him. D. King. Got the nerve to have the last name King. You ain't no... 
King Comedy. This my bruv right here, driving. They told me to get back in the car. I'm in the sewer right now. Best believe that. I got a couple cases against them. Let them be the next victim, and I win. I'm a winner. Try to go to the other side, because the other window rolled down. You want to talk to me or not? Talk, talk to you about you. what? Talking what are we talking about? You, you said you had some questions about why. We don't got no questions. Y'all put us over. I gave you my registration, which has you just been registered today. I don't need you talking to my brother. You guys are detained right now. For what? So, for expired registration. It ain't no expired registration. You full of B King. You full of Okay. B King. Put your shades on. Fake. Officer, today. yeah, it's registered today. You, you just want to see my insurance? If the DMV record shows your registration is expired, okay, mm -hmm. who's the car registered to? Me, you, you, me. Okay. The DMV record shows your registration is expired. It ain't. You see the paperwork That's right it. there yeah, from today. Expired. You may be wondering why this man is nervous if his registration is fine. The problem is uh, that due to a mistake by the cops, he and his friend uh, sat in the heat for half an hour and the cops illegally detained them. I don't know how I would behave in that situation. Well, just look at the date. They probably saying it's not. Look at the date. I was okay until Goofy and Goofara pulled me over. Nothing happened. They put us over for a registration violation. What? They want to down. He's coming down. He's going in handcuffs. So for what? What you gonna put me in handcuffs for? Behavior right now. So you want that to happen? Calm down, man. Stop talking to me then. Just check the paperwork. The car's in my name. My name is Robert Hayson. Would you like to see my ID? No. You don't need to see it. It doesn't matter who I am. The paperwork clearly states the date today. But like what my partner was trying to say, when we looked it up on the system, it said that it was expired. Your registration was expired. It proves that it's not expired. I just got pulled yeah, over exactly. by the police. There was a need. I'm a black man getting pulled over. That shit is a problem. I don't understand. Bye. Can we go? Can you give me my paperwork so we can go? And stop holding me hostage. I want to get the... I got the sun beaming on me right now. He showed you insurance proof. We I don't care about my attitude. I don't need to be nice to you, Rojas. I showed you proof. Let me the f go. You holding me hostage now. I don't have to be nice. And the next video will be about a car search. Would the search be legal? That's for you to decide. But what was most interesting to me was how manipulated the cops were and how the young guy didn't give in to the manipulation and sacrificed four hours of his time to stand up for his rights. What's up, man? How's it going? Doing good, sir. Was your first time getting pulled over or what, dude? Yeah. Okay, just because you're acting real nervous, man, so... Yeah. You don't have anything illegal in the car that I should uh, be worried about? Any weapons or anything like that? No, I don't. I wasn't worried. I thought it was 65 here, no, sir. Just a simple conversation, right, man? That's all it is, dude. Uh -huh. I understand. I have a couple quick questions. You seem like kind of nervous. Okay, and like I said, I think it could be because of the, the reason because you got pulled over by the police and you would never been pulled over before, right? Like you said. That's one reason. Normal people that get pulled over by the police are nervous, but not extremely nervous like you seem. So I'm going to ask you straight up, man. Inside your vehicle, okay, is there... Nothing in there. Okay. I, I don't have anything. I understand grenades, bombs, no. rocket launchers, really crazy. No. Do you give my officer consent to search the vehicle? I don't. No? I'm, I'm being there's nothing in there. I've been I doing mean, this for almost 10 years, brother, and the way you've been giving off the indicators, it kind of shows me a little bit of red flags. What? The nervousness. The nervousness is one. I mean, there's nothing really in there. And I get it. Like we, like we said, it could be just because you, you got pulled over. But like I said, we, we've done this for a while where we know something's up. And I'm not saying something's up with you. This cop says so proudly that he has been a police officer for 10 years and understands people who break the law and who are just nervous. But at the end of the video, you'll realize that it looks like uh, this cop wasted 10 years on the job for nothing because he only learned how to get innocent people in trouble. You didn't give us verbal consent to search your vehicle. Of Guess what? Not, we, yeah. It's my, it's my, that's, it's that's my, we're not here to violate any of your rights. Yeah, I, but I think as long as reasonable like, suspicion as far as that, but it's being me, for. Are you keeping me detained here then? Until the dog comes? Yes. Because now I have reasonable suspicion that's what might be well, in there. What's the reasonable suspicion? That there might be narcotics inside the vehicle. Well, we'll give it that. Just your behavior. There's a known traffic, there's a known route that people Just, take with I, narcotics. It's a US route. I-10. I mean, everybody can travel on the roadways. It's a US route though. Definitely. And it's a it's a highway. And you are correct. So I mean, it's I call over people every day on this on this highway, on that highway. I don't believe your so, concern is valid, though, sir. I just and want to that's something you. that you can probably bring up in court if there is something inside the vehicle. But there is nothing in the vehicle. And I don't know that. But you can. You're free to leave, but the vehicle has to stay here until I get my, my investigation vehicle, done. My vehicle can go. If you would like to, then you could be placed under arrest for obstruction. It's not obstruction, though. I don't have anything. I don't want. I understand. Like I said, I don't really care about marijuana. I'm caring about the shit that's putting I, people I, away. But I don't you feel that, that I. Need you. And I understand. Like I said, it's just police work, man. It's reasonable suspicion. I mean, that's something that your peers, and if you have to go to court because there is something inside the vehicle, that's something that your peers at the, in the courtroom can decide. But as far as right now, I have independent reasonable suspicion, and that's all I need in the state of New Mexico. The cops seemed suspicious of the guy's nervousness and the road he decided to take to get home. 
but honestly, I've never heard of separate road being built uh, for drug dealers. So one of the suspicions was literally the road this guy was taking. If the canine does show up and it does hit, I'm just gonna be straight up with you. If it does do an indicator that something may be in it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seize your vehicle, I'm gonna no. conduct a search warrant, then I cannot go into your vehicle until that search warrant is approved by the judge. I don't think that's reasonable at all. I think that's incredibly... You, you have your rights. Do you have anything on your person? Because you keep, you keep trying yeah. to reach for that pocket. Is it okay if I touch you down real quick? Just make sure you have anything on you? Because yeah, you keep reaching for that pocket. Down, but turn, I don't turn it off for me. I don't know why it's just, face you, you just keep putting your hands in your pocket. Because it's, it's not nice. But I understand. And like I said, we're not violating anything. Everything is being recorded. So just understand that, okay? And we're doing everything by what the New Mexico state law requires us to do and allows us to do, okay? So as far as I understand... Are you keeping me detained here then? Until the dog comes? Yes. You are legally detained at this time. You are more likely to come with us, not handcuffs. You can, you're not detained. We're going to be using Border Patrol. I wish we had a canine here because then it would have been easier, but we have to call for a canine. Obviously, the dog it's gonna probably hit if there's something that's so he's trained for marijuana too but he's trained for all, all narcotics yeah, i don't have any of that yeah so he's trained for all narcotics man so thing is like i said i mean we're gonna have to just see what we do as far as if a dog indicates or not as you can see it was getting dark outside and the cops were still waiting for a dog but one of the funny moments was when a cop said he wasn't going to violate this guy's rights and the second later another cop started searching him it's like a Something that goes afterwards, yeah, like what happens if I yeah, say no? Like a repercussion. No, no, you're, you're free to say no. So like, go ahead, they'll take my car and go home. That's a, these guys are dangerous. It's hey, man, so, so uh, you call me the dog hit on the passenger side. On the passenger side? Yes, sir. Uh, just, we're gonna have to stop and get a search warrant. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. So that's the thing. Now that we have probable cause with the canine, now we can go further. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna tease your vehicle and we'll go further. Like okay. I said, can you're free to leave. Can but I go, can I, is it gonna take long? If, if how long would it's it It's gonna take time, brother. It's probably yeah. gonna take two or three hours, man. That's, that's just straight up on us. Yes, we gotta test out the warrant. I just we gotta get him cut. Okay. I, I get that, brother. Wait, like I said, can, you're can, free. I wait, can I wait with y'all and just do this? Like I said, man, it's just if there's something in there, you could have just been honest with us and you're gonna save the whole trip. Brandon Shaken was detained for more than four hours by the Lordsburg Police Department. His vehicle was impounded and searched and ultimately returned. Nothing was found. Brandon was respectful, positive and compliant throughout the entire stop. He was also calm. At a certain point, I had to comply and not escalate it, he said. They weren't allowed to keep me there for longer than needed for a traffic stop and the fact that they used a Border Patrol K-9 unit trained to hit on substances legal in New Mexico just further grows my distrust in law enforcement, which is very unfortunate as I have always had high regards for those in uniform. You know, friends, it's really scary to be in jail and I don't even know what's scarier, the criminals you can meet there uh, or the cops who can beat you up in the mob. <laughs> Body cam video released by the Monroe County Sheriff's Office shows the moments that led up to a fight inside the jail between an inmate and correctional officers. The officers are trying to move the inmate to a medical observation cell. He doesn't want to go. That's when four officers move in. Four, come on. For the next 25 seconds, correctional officers use force as they try to subdue the inmate, eventually pinning him in place. That's when one officer appears to notice his split lift, hitting the inmate again, even after he's been subdued. As officers lead the inmate out of his cell, his eye appears swollen shut and his face is broken. Damn, gonna break my arm? As they work to get him into a restrained chair, officers move forward. I'm not fighting! Mitchell, check, check your restraints. Check your restraints. Oh, no, I'm not fighting! Stop moving! Stop! Stop! Stop. Here, I'm I can't breathe! I'm getting it. I can't breathe! Yeah, yeah. I can't breathe! You're I can't Friends, before you watch this story to the end, I ask you to write any comment and click like. And anyone who wants to support me, I ask you to send how much you can spare by pressing the thanks button. This channel exists only because of you. It happened as far back as a year ago. A few days later, the sheriff made his comments. I immediately contacted the Monroe County prosecutor and asked the Indiana State Police to conduct an independent criminal investigation. My office also conducted our own internal investigation. 
Sheriff Marte says he decided to fire one of the corrections officers for failing to de-escalate the situation. He identified the officer as James Mitchell, shown in the video with the split lip. Although I have only been sheriff for a little more than a month, my goal remains to always ensure the highest level of excellence. I have the backs of all of my employees, but I will not hesitate to hold them accountable if they fail to follow our policies. Of course, it's great that they fired one of the attackers, but it baffles me that the others are still in their positions. Why are you putting me in a serious? You assaulted an officer, multiple officers. I didn't assault none, it was 401.